Hi, I'm Mr D and welcome to my latest video recipe. Well, Christmas is nearly here and it's time to make my Christmas pudding. And by using my thermal cooker to cook it in, I will make huge savings in fuel. The Christmas pudding dates back as far as the 14th century. In those days, it was called a frumenti. The frumenti resembled a porridge and was made from beef, mutton, raisins, currants, prunes, wines and spices. By the end of the 16th century, by adding eggs, breadcrumbs, dried fruit, beer and spirits, it had changed to become more like the Christmas pudding we know today. All was going well with this Christmas dessert until 1664, when the Puritans banned it as bad custom. And it wasn't until 1714, King George I re-established it as part of the Christmas meal. Over the years, many superstitions have surrounded the Christmas pudding. One superstition says that the pudding should be made with 13 ingredients to represent Jesus and his disciples and that every member of the family should take turns to stir the pudding with a wooden spoon from east to west in honour of the wise men. Another superstition is putting a silver coin in the pudding to bring luck to whoever finds it. This tradition has now almost died out as coins are no longer made from silver. Well, that's a bit about the history. Now let me show you how I make my Christmas pudding. So let's get cooking. Right, here we are. Here's all the ingredients here. And um, I'll talk you through them all as we go through. And as usual, I will actually put them as footed frames on the um, video as we go. Now the first thing I want to do is actually grease the bowl. Now the easiest way I find to grease in the bowl is taking a pastry brush and some um, marge, butter, whatever. Uh, I'm using just a spread here and I'll just wipe that round the bowl. I also do this if I'm doing cakes or bread. I use the same principle. It just makes life nice and easy. So just make sure it's well greased. Right, that's now some well grease. So I'll just put that over to one side. And now I'll bring um, across a mixing bowl. Now the first thing we need to do is add all the dry ingredients. Right, the first thing I'm going to add is the self-raising flour. Now this recipe calls for raisins, sultanas, self-raising flour, suet, um, breadcrumbs, and it also has dark brown sugar. Now all of those are 115 grams of each. Now I'm working on a two pint or approximately one litre pudding basin. That's quite important that you remember that. So the first thing, as I say, we're going to add is the self-raising flour. Put that into a bowl. And follow that up by some raisins. And some, I'm going to now add the sultanas. The suet. Uh, this is 115 grams of breadcrumbs. I've got one large apple. This has been chopped and uh, unfortunately it's gone slightly brown because it's been out a little bit, but put that in as well. And we've got brown sugar. I'm going to add all those together. I'll use our hands on that. I think what I'm going to do is, is transfer that to a slightly larger bowl because when I try and mix in the liquids, I think we're going to have a bit of a problem there. See, so this is now getting quite, um, quite nicely mixed. Um, it's becoming sort of an even mix of color. Okay, now I'm going to add the juice of a lemon to this. The rind from the same lemon. 
Now next thing we need to add is a uh, mixed spice. And we've got a bit of cinnamon. Now I've got grated nutmeg. That's fine. Going to add one cup of milk. Four tablespoons of dark rum. And we need two, two eggs. These, these eggs are um, the ones from our chickens, so really nice eggs, very fresh. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is mix all that together with a spoon. Now we'll just keep mixing this until it's all well mixed together. There we go, that's quite well now well mixed together. So let's uh, move the pudding basin over and we want to put the mix into the pudding basin. Found a lot of differences in sizes of pudding basins. So when you're actually going out to buy one, if you have, don't own one, then just carefully look at them. That's quite nicely filled. So now what I've got to do is I'm going to put greaseproof paper over that and then I've got to put a top on it, string the top, making sure I've got a handle and then we can uh, then move over to the thermal cooker and put it in the thermal cooker. So I'll just put the greaseproof paper over it. The greaseproof paper, I just lightly grease the same way as a pudding bowl with a, with a brush. Um, now I'm going to put foil over it. Now I need to put a fold in the foil so it's got a room to expand if um, the pudding rises too much. So just fold it in half then do a little fold like that and then what you need to do is open it out like so. And then we put that over and we fold it down the sides. Goes. Now I've done the foil, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie some string around it. So what I what I'm going to do is take a piece of string and make a loop in it. I want to leave a reasonable length there because I'm going to tie back onto that make a loop in it, then I'm going to feed that through, put that round. Now I need to make sure this is right up underneath the lip. So feel it all the way around, make sure it's underneath the lip. And we come back down to here and we now tie this in the knot. Right, and that's now given me enough to go over the top and around 
told you, you have to feed it under here to make my handle. All I need to do is then, there we go, that's handle. Now, the last thing I need to do is fold this up and trim it. I'm going to trim off around here. The foil I'm using here is eco-friendly foil. Um, you can get that from most supermarkets and um, it seems if I'm using a thermal cooker I ought to be using eco-friendly foil as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just take that over to the um, thermal cooker on the gas and um, then we need to bring that to the boil. Then we're going to simmer that for about 25 to 30 minutes and then after that we will then uh, put it in the outer pot, shut the lid and leave it to cook for, I will leave it for five or six hours minimum. Okay, we have our boiling water here so just turn that down a little bit. Um, I've put a trivet in the bottom of this, as you can see, and also I've gauged the level uh, by putting the pot in beforehand with cold water. So now I lower my Christmas pudding into the pot. What I really wanted to do is come up to, it's coming up to about where the rim is. And I'll now put the lid on. Now what I need to do is bring that back to the boil when it's come to the boil, then I will turn it down to a simmer and we'll simmer it for 30 minutes. Just switch the timer off. I'm now going to move this and put it into the outer pot. shut the lid and leave that for a minimum of five hours cooking in there and just remember to turn the gas off.